Beloved, within the Seventh-day Adventist Church, this is an urgent message to the new, theolo new theologian pastors that preach woman's ordination, no victory over sin, Sunday surge, um, jewelry, um, and push that if you return tithe and offering, you lose your soul. If you don't return tithe and offering, you lose your soul salvation without pushing obedience to God's requirements. This is taken from Ezekiel 14, verse 1 to verse 6. It states, Then came certain of the children of the elders of the Israel unto me and sat before me. And the word of the Lord came unto me, saying, Son of man, these men have set up their idols in their heart and put the stumbling block of their iniquity before their face. Should I be inquired of all by them? Therefore, speak unto them and say unto them, Thus saith the Lord God, Every man of the house of Israel that set up his idols in his heart and put up the stumbling block of his iniquity before his face and cometh to the prophet, I the Lord will answer him that cometh according to the multitude of his idols, that I may take the house of Israel in their own heart because they are all estranged from me through their idols. Therefore, thus saith the Lord, Say unto the house of Israel, thus saith the Lord God, repent and turn yourselves from your idols and turn away your, from your faces from all your abominations. Beloved, this is a message to these new theologian pastors that believe in women's ordination and Sunday surge. Turn yourself from your idols. How long halt ye between two opinions? If the Lord be God, follow him. If Baal be God, follow him. There used to be a time, beloved, where I tried to please these conference presidents that were down for women's ordination and Sunday surge and everything is to get hired by them. I've completed 53 hours of college credit at a Seventh-day Adventist institution, and I may get back to finish the rest of my degree. And I passed spiritual formation recently with a C. The, new, the class is now called Foundations of Biblical Spirituality. What they've done now is they've changed the name, but they have the same, the same content and requirement in the class. But let me tell you something, beloved. It was a serious message. God would not be inquired of these new theologian, Jesuit, false ministers in our ranks who teach Sunday surge, woman's ordination, spiritual formation, jewelry wearing and no victory over sin and the pre-fall nature of Christ. Christ had the nature of Adam after the fall. He did not have the nature of Adam before the fall. He can be touched with the feelings of our infirmities. He was tempted in all points like as we are yet without sin. For verily he took out of him the nature of angels, but the seed of Abraham. Beloved, believe the Bible and the spirit of prophecy for this last day. Do not try to please men. Please God. It is more important to please God than to please men, beloved. Stand according to the Bible and the spirit of prophecy. Yes, I said it. Because Revelation chapter 12 and verse 17 brings out a more final point about God's true church in these last days. Revelation 12, 17, it reads this. It says, And the dragon was wroth with the woman, and went to make war with the woman of her seed, which keep the commandments of God, and have the testimony of Jesus Christ. The commandments of God are all of God's ten commandments, beloved. From Exodus 21 to verse 17. Including the fourth commandment, which is the Sabbath commandment, the seventh of the week, which is today. And the testimony of Jesus Christ is the spirit of prophecy. The spirit of prophecy is not just all the prophets in the Old Testament and the apostles in the New Testament. It's also a little woman named Mrs. Ellen G. White. I call her Sister White, the prophetess of God. That characterizes the remnant church of these last days. And Revelation chapter 18 says this. Revelation chapter 18 says this, Revelation chapter 18 verse 4, and it says, And I heard another voice from heaven saying, Come out of her, my people, that you be not partakers of her sins, and that you receive not of her plagues. These people that are in the apostate Protestant world, 
These people that are part of the Roman Catholic Church or the papacy, these people that are in the pagan religions like Buddhism and Shintoism and Taoism and um, all these other religions are God's people. But they're in Babylon. They're in spiritual confusion. They must come out of Babylon. They must believe that Jesus Christ is the most holy place of the heavenly sanctuary, investigating character and blotting out sin. They must believe that the dead, when they die, cease to exist until the first resurrection or the second resurrection. They must believe that the seventh and Sabbath from Sunset Friday, Sunset Saturday, seventh day of the Sabbath. They must believe that jewelry is inappropriate because it represents idolatry. They must believe that we must not eat unclean meat like pork and shrimp and lobster. They must believe all these pillars of our of our messages and they must believe in a prophetess named sister white the prophetess of the lord and they must believe in victor over sin that jude 24 says now to him that is able to keep him falling and to present you faultless because if they do not believe these brothers and sisters they're lost they're still in babylon and they must come out of babylon my people but these new theologian pastors that are telling them they can still eat pork and be saved they tell them that they can dance in church and listen to all that wild hip hop and um, rock and roll and jazz music in church that tell them that they cannot have victory over their sins, that talk about competitive sports in the pulpits. All these new theologian pastors will be judged in this last hour by the word of the Lord, the Bible and the spirit of prophecy commanded. And I'm not going to stop preaching. I've been warned by the leadership of the Seventh day Adventist Church to keep my mouth shut. I've been warned by my pastor to be quiet about Sunday surge because if I'm not, I may get in trouble. But I'm not going to shut up, even if I get this fellowship, even if I get censured, even if I get put out of the synagogue. John 16 states this about the terrible crisis in these last days. John 16 says this about us standing over truth in these last days. These things have I spoken unto you that you should not be offended. They shall put you out of the synagogues. Yea, the time cometh that whosoever killeth you will think that he doeth God's service. And these things will they do unto you because they have not known the Father nor me. I just got put out of a local Sabbath school class here in the area because a young man got up there and was saying that we seven divinities are too restrictive. They were trying to tell people to come out of their churches and that we show no love. And I rebuked them and said, if you don't want to be around seven divinities, why elite? Why not come around us? Why not go to a first day church? And I got put out of the Sabbath school class because they said I was unkind. I'm hearing from Sabbath school teachers in these seven divinities churches. I'm not going to mention names. They say that we should not preach out the form about pork anymore. They're saying things like, um, we can't have victory over sin. They're saying things like, stop telling folk they're in Babylon. They're saying things like, we, we should love homosexuals. They're saying things like, we should not preach 28 fundamental beliefs. I disagree with that. We must preach our message. We must not be afraid. It is not time for us, beloved, to haul down our colors anymore at all. We must hold up the standard. Pray for me as I go next week to a wonderful religious camp meeting with Moses Mason and Jeremiah Davis, Apocalypse Ministries Camp Meeting and Messengers of Life Ministries in Dakota, Dakota, Georgia. Pray for the meeting there. And Lord, richly bless those saints out there. God bless you. Happy Saturday, beloved. Don't hold on your colors.